Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Well today I'm going to be imaging the... Uh, hang on, don't you mean tonight you're imaging? No, no, I mean today. Now where was I? Um, yeah, that's right. So today I'm going to be imaging the Heart and Soul Nebulas. <laughs> whoa, 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 wait, but hang on. Those are in the Northern Hemisphere, aren't they? Yep. And we're right down in the Southern Hemisphere? I don't get it. Relax, I'll explain in a minute. Just keep rolling the intro. Perhaps I should explain a little further for my confused friend over here. Okay, so we've got a map of the world here, and up here is the Northern Hemisphere, and down here is the Southern Hemisphere, and uh, way, way down here is little old New Zealand. Now, it's, well there you see, there's a, we have a bit of a problem. So, um, if I then just quickly move New Zealand away from that cloud, and we just zoom in, uh, this is where I'm situated in the north, uh, here we go, here we go. Uh, obviously somebody's got the telescope out. You can see my problem. Now when you're trying to do astrophotography in a country called Aotearoa, which loosely means land of the long white cloud, well inevitably when you set up your equipment this is what happens. And although in my video at the end of 2023 I seem to have done quite a few hours of astrophotography, that was divided by three rigs running at the same time and when you do the calculations it comes out to not many actual clear nights in the year. So I wanted to do some projects with long integrations, maybe have some faint targets, unusual targets, but how do I do that given our weather conditions in New Zealand? So then I thought, well, maybe I should consider going remote at a dark sky location. No, not that kind of remote. I actually mean, you know, remote place, dark sky, telescope setup of some description, but there's nowhere in New Zealand really that has a reliable number of clear nights. So I thought, well, what are my options? Do I just buy data from a dark sky location? But that's not cheap. And uh, also, it didn't really quite feel like astrophotography to me. Next option, do I rent a space um, overseas and um, have my own setup there? Again, the monthly fees are not that cheap either, especially in New Zealand dollars. And if you're going to be remote, you need some really reliable gear and that tends to be quite expensive too because the last thing you want is your gear breaking down while you're trying to do some imaging and then what do you do? Do you then have to travel back out to that dark sky location that might be overseas to try and fix the system? Although I do understand that there are some places that will provide that kind of service for you. And so I was watching YouTube and a video by Steve from Scotia Astro who did a video on remote imaging and well suddenly everything became clear and I was now enlightened. So during the great COVID pandemic First Light Optics set up Icarus Observatory initially for testing equipment but then they decided to make um, setups available for people to hire in southern Spain not far from Granada. Now the Icarus Observatory is actually hosted by Pixel Skies so they have one of the sheds which is this shed over here and um, if you watch this video you can see that as the roof rolls off there is a bunch of telescopes here, all the same telescopes but set up slightly differently either for mono imaging or for colour imaging. And um, here's just a quick video just showing how the roof rolls on and off, um, all controlled by um, weather monitored uh, software and, and again all controlled by Pixel Skies. So what am I using? Uh, this is one of the setups for mono imaging, which is what I'm doing. We've got a Stellar Mirror 90mm f6 refractor, normally a 540mm focal length, but it's got a 0.8 focal reducer, so that 
brings it down to 432 millimeters and f 4.8 so a bit wider field and a bit faster which is nice the camera is the trusty ASI 2600mm Pro, it's the mono version, which I'm very familiar with, having a couple of those here at home anyway. And uh, there's a 7 position filter wheel with 36mm Antlia filters, LRGB, and the 3 nanometer SHO filters. And for guiding, there's an OAG and an ASI 120 mono camera. Moving back around to the other side of the telescope, we can see that it's being controlled by a B-Link Windows Mini PC with Sequence Generator Pro on board. And then the power is actually being uh, provided by a high-tech Astro Mount Hub Pro with a UPS backup. I think this is going to be replaced soon by a Pegasus um, Astro Advance box. Uh, at the front we've got a flip-flap by Deep Sky Dad which is not only protecting the uh, front of the telescope from dust etc but also can be used for doing flats and darks. Uh, the focusing is a ZWO EAF which uh, we're all familiar with and this is all running on an Outron CEM40 mount. Now these systems all use SG Pro, which I first started using when I started out in astrophotography. And it didn't take long for me to get back familiar with it, particularly because Grant sat down over Zoom and went through a tutorial about how absolutely everything works, all the equipment, um, and of course how SG Pro works. So I was up and running very quickly. And I have to say, if there are any problems that I was having uh, or any glitches, um, a quick email to Grant and uh, he was on to things extremely extremely quickly. Sometimes I'd send the email off and within 15 minutes I noticed he'd logged on and sorted something out or he would pass on some information to the Skypixels team to sort it out for me. On the website you can have a look at the weather conditions, you can see how everything is being protected by the AAG Weather Centre um, and it gives you information as to whether the roof is you know, open and whether it's calm, any rain etc etc. You can see a couple of uh, all sky cameras to see what conditions look like. You can see here um, you know, your cloud cover, what, any wind or any rain and there are also measurements of your sky quality a weather forecast care of glare outside and also um, weather forecast from Meteo Blue and this is one of the satellite maps uh, so you can see any potential approaching clouds um, or whether perhaps there might be some high cloud uh, getting in on the act on your images uh, wind and then some other forecasts just to show you what's coming up for imaging in the next few nights so look, in the end, this has turned out to be the ideal remote setup for me. Uh, it means I don't have to spend a whole lot more money buying expensive and reliable gear to send overseas. I don't have to worry about paying for it to be sent overseas, hoping it gets there in one piece, and then either relying on somebody else to set up for me, or I have to travel overseas to actually set up as what myself. And trust me, when you live in uh, New Zealand, everywhere is a long way away. Um, I also like the fact that this is hosted within the Pixel Skies, which means there's people living on site there. So if there's a problem, a USB cable needs replacing or whatever, um, they can be down there and uh, fixing it straight away and you can be up and running in no time. So look, I'll leave a link in the description below in case you've been considering imaging in a remote location, see whether it's uh, the ideal setup for you. And um, look, I've been having a hell of a lot of fun. I'm imaging uh, right at the, pre at the present, downloading some more data on the Heart Nebula. And uh, yeah, I've actually probably collected more data from Spain in the last couple of weeks than I have here at home in the last two or three months. So, um, and it's also very exciting. There's a whole new round of targets um, available for me to, to do some imaging. The other thing, of course, is for the period that I'm renting this setup, uh, only I am using it, so I don't have to worry about anybody else trying to use it, and so I can image whenever I want, uh, assuming that it's uh, clear skies in Spain and the roof is rolled off. That's not to say that you couldn't share a setup with a friend and share the costs, or a couple of friends, I mean you can do that as well. So um, look, I'll leave you with the image that I've done of the Sol Nebula. I was hoping to have my image of the Heart Nebula ready too, but I'm actually sort of still downloading data I decided to go a little bit longer than I'd planned 
um, but I do have the sole nebula finished and um, look until next time um, I wish you all lots and lots of clear skies.